Hello everyone. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for your participation in the training. In the first part of the training, we'll examine the introductory courses and then we'll move on to advanced courses. First, let's take a look at what is the finite element method. The basic idea in the finite element method is to simplify complex problem and then solve the simplified complex problems. In this method, the solid geometry is divided into a large number of finite elements by the FEA software. In short, the solution of the problem that is divided into parts connected to each other with many points can be done easily. We'll call these points as nodes in ANSYS. It was developed for the first time in 1956 for the stress analysis of the airframe and in the following decade, it was used in the solution of applied sciences and engineering problems. Today, it's a frequently used method. What you need to know here is that an equation is created for each node, so numerically we compute each node. We can find the result of any point between two joints by interpolation. Let's look at the 1D beam element. You can think of the node as the starting and ending point for the beam element. An element is a line between two nodes. But here may also be mid nodes. Don't just think of the as the starting and ending point. So let's assume we have a midpoint here. Then we will have two elements on the beam. One will be here and the second one will be here. If we think two dimensions, which we call them as plate or shell elements, we call the element between the nodes in the same way. We are meshing the structures from nodes and elements, therefore meshing is very, very important for us. Finite element software doesn't recognize your geometry. Even if you create very great models, if you have bad mesh structures and qualities, so that means the model is no longer great. So how does the finite element uh, software not recognize the geometry? It reaches the results with the nodes and elements that we created. Node and elements represent the geometry. You already know the FEA device complex models in the small elements that are simpler to calculate. Then it solves each element and builds a matrix for all of them. In order to solve each element, such element needs to have its own coordinate system. As you can understand here, the more number of nodes we have, the more numerical solutions there will be. So the computing time will be longer. If we use less, we may not get the correct results or sensitive accuracy. This dilemma will always happen. Sometimes we need sensitive solutions and extend the solution time Sometimes we may want to reach a solution quickly. We'll verify the accuracy of our results with uh, mesh convergence studies, but these are advanced topics. Let's look at the advantages of a finite element method. It can solve very complex geometries. It can solve static, dynamic, fluid dynamics, heat problems. In this training set, we'll be dealing with the static part. It can solve complex boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are a very easily overlooked topic that seems very easy, but it's a very, very important topic. It directly affects the solution. How should we define the boundary conditions to the model is a very important case. The boundary condition is basically applying loads and supports, but it can get very complex. It's very important to provide correct and proper boundary conditions. It can solve thousands of equations in a short time. It also depends on the model, setup, and technical specifications of your laptop. Let's look at the disadvantages. The accuracy of the results need to be examined very well, and the problem should be examined thoroughly. We need to be able to predict the results. So we must be competent to interpret the results. 
In other words, the finite element method is a branch that requires competence. And you are someone who wants to turn this disadvantage into an advantage by participating in this training and spending time. We need to master the engineering fundamentals. We'll simply talk about this in advanced lessons, but you have to take it further. If we learn to use program away from engineering knowledge, so how difficult can it be learn software for us? Click here to do that and click here to do that. Unfortunately, we cannot get anywhere with a few mouse clicks. This time we are just creating animation. Because we can get a result if we don't get an error in ANSYS, we watch the animation. It's so easy to reach, but if you have no idea about what's going on, I mean, if you can't give an engineering judgment and comments on the results, and if you present the results to your customer on your project, it will be a complete disaster. Here, it will be enough to just use the program. There is no need to solve the matrices but one by one. We just have to be able to interpret the results we found. We should know how ANSYS solved it. In general, the equation F equal K times U is used in the finite element expressions where K is the stiffness matrix, U is the displacements, and F is the force. So we get our stress values from displacements. Actually, uh, stress values from the strains, and stress comes from the displacements. Now, let's briefly show uh, three-dimensional nodes and elements in ANSYS and end the first part. All right, I have just created a very simple box to show you nodes and elements. Let's look at the view like that, and let's assume it's a 2D square. From here, selection should be nodes. We'll learn these selections later. Click the corner points and you'll see the nodes. These green boxes are nodes. If you hit Ctrl, Command and drag your mouse, you can select some nodes more than one. These are the nodes on the model. So let's look at the elements. Selection should be element face now. We are selecting element faces since we assume this is a 2D geometry. Now let's check how many nodes we have them. Under the mesh section, go for statistics and you can see the nodes and elements number here. We have 125 elements and 216 nodes. This is a 50 by 50 square solid. Um, let's look at them in 3D. Nodes are the same and elements are 3D anymore. I think you got what is the nodes and elements are. You can check your element and nodes number here as I mentioned. For example, let me increase them. The element size is 10 mm now. The length was 50 mm, so we have 5 elements here. If I say 5 mm for the element size, there will be 10 elements on the vertical edge. As we expected, we have 10 elements, nodes and elements number has increased at least 4 times. So there will be more numerical solutions since we have more nodes on the model because it will compute each solution on each node. So that's all. See you next.